President's senior speech. A warm welcome to Elizabeth's many guests here today. Parents Amy and Douglas Nesbitt, grandparents Nancy Sutherland and Mary Gail and Bob Nesbitt, siblings Allison and Daniel via FaceTime, and her many friends, including her second moms. We're glad you're here with us today. Elizabeth arrived at PrEP in the ninth grade. She has been an active member of the PrEP and the Augusta community for years, including cotillion and service to her church. She also played violin for 13 years. And speaking of playing, she is a gifted athlete. You can find her on the volleyball and basketball courts and on the soccer field at different times throughout the school year. She also makes sure to cheer on her fellow athletes with her participation in the student section club. Academics, arts, and athletics aside, Elizabeth also exhibits the prep values of service and honor in her work with the service club and her leadership as the 2021-22 president of the Honor Education Council. Now, you may have been mentally correcting me every time I've called her Elizabeth in my introduction. That is not the name we call her. We all know her as simply E. It is a to the point, easygoing, and fun nickname that fits this young lady perfectly. Today, she is going to share with us the importance of names. Please welcome E. Nesbitt to the stage.
Do you know your name can influence your identity and therefore your success? It is interesting the connotations certain names give. Some are considered old-fashioned, cheerful, unique, or just strange. When you meet someone, you start with a name. That one word gives the other person a hint about your ethnicity, society, and where you come from. Even the sound or pronunciation of the name can influence what people think about you. Many consider round sounds like M, O, or L to be more pleasing to the ear, while the hard sounds, the so-called plosives, like K, T, and B, sound sharper to the ear. Smooth-sounding names like Molly or Liam sound more agreeable or calm than Kirk or Katarina, which sound more energetic or outgoing. There is a reason that some words are curse words. They have hard, unpleasant sounds that seem rude, even if you don't know what they mean. Albert Nekrovna, a professor of psychology, conducts a study by asking a single question. Suppose you were to meet someone for the first time and you only knew their gender and first name. What kind of person do you think they would turn out to be? The respondents rate the name on a scale of 1 to 100 in categories of caring, popular, successful, masculine or feminine, and overall attractiveness. With the data, he finds the top 20 most successful names, which are all common and mostly white names. For example, John made a 98, which is extremely high, and Newt made an 11, which is extremely low. There are some names that go out of style, but the successful names that are always around give powerful connotations. The Haravion says that it is, it is less important to give your child a unique name than one that will help them through life. You are more likely to get hired and promoted if your name is easy to pronounce and more common. But names like Trixie or Candy make it harder for someone to be hired. If your middle initial is used more often, you seem smarter. People are very judgmental in their first impressions, especially middle schoolers. A nickname in school can stick with you into adulthood and hinder your success. I bet Christopher Charles Nicolase is not taken seriously because everyone just knows him as McLovin. <laughs> On the other hand, a nickname can push you to be better and stand out. For example, Eldrick Taunt Woods might have been better off because he is known as Tiger Woods but it depends on your opinion. When I told Porna Dahakudi about my speech, she said, I wish I had a nickname, but anyway you shorten Porna, it's just bad. <laughs> <laughs> Think about all the influencers, artists, and writers who changed their names. Louise May Alcott, famous for her book, Little Women, wrote under the pen name of A.M. Bernard, which sounds very masculine. This encouraged people to read her works because women authors were not respected at the time. Joanne Rowling wrote under the pen name of J.K. Rowling because the Harry Potter series was targeted at young boys who might not want to read a book written by a woman. Eric Marlin Bishop changed his name to the gender neutral name Jamie Foxx because people were booking more women for stand up comedy at the time. Snoop Dogg's real name is Calvin, Cardi B's real name is Belfalice, Freddie Mercury's real name was Brooke. So, of course, this theory is not 100% true all the time. There are very successful people with unique names. So, Porna, yes, there is still a chance. <laughs> <laughs> so, now that you have learned a bit about the significance of names, let's have a little fun. There's a term called nominative determinant, which is defined as a tendency for people to become active in subjects that relate to their names. A person tends to gravitate toward the field or profession in which their name fits, subconsciously or consciously. Some think it is a part of her past because in history, people were named for their line of work. For example, Tiger Woods is a golfer. There's a firefighter named McBurney. Usain Bolt sprints. There's a chiropractor named McCracken. <laughs> Wake and Payne are funeral directors. There's a lawyer named Sue You, <laughs> and Tim Duncan plays basketball. So from this marina, you can't be a goalie. You gotta work with boats in a harbor or you know, a marina. <laughs> Most importantly, your name is yours. Whether you use your name, you carry your culture, history, family, and identity with you. It's unique to you. And if your name is not what you want it to be or not who you are, you can change it.
for example, I go by E. My mom's name is Amy Elizabeth, and my dad's name is Douglas Hamilton. So they put their middle names together, and my name is Elizabeth Hamilton. I'm a part of each of them. Elizabeth in Hebrew is Elisheba, which means oath to God. Elizabeth is biblical, noble, and widely popular. In the U.S., it has been one of the top ten names from 1925 to 1972. In my opinion, Elizabeth is more formal. E, on the other hand, is more accessible, silly, and a little bit stupid, which parallels my personality. <laughs> so I chose it, and it stuck. In conclusion, your name is not simply what people call you to get your attention. It influences you and the decisions you make, and even your successes in life. So seniors, as we go off and leave some things behind, remember what has helped shape you to become the person you are today. Maybe it was something as simple as your name. As you meet new people, put the judgments aside and get to know them.